and we are almost done with it. Uh, what is left uh, today is basically um, uh, uh, two examples. We'll see how to use the A to D, how to, con to configure and use uh, the A to D. Uh, last time, um, um, yes, last time uh, we looked at the uh, details of the SCI uh, uh, module. Uh, we looked at basically the registers that can be used to configure and use the uh, A to D uh, module, uh, either A to D, the, the, any of the A to D modules that are available in the microcontroller that we have, they are identical 100%, except for the fact that uh, the pins are different and the register names are uh, uh, different. Um, so we talked about the control register, the status register, uh, the test uh, register, uh, and all that uh, stuff. Some of these registers we said uh, are responsible for configuring the clock. Some of them are uh, for choosing uh, uh, the, the, the uh, formatting of the result, whether it is signed, unsigned representation, uh, justification, right, left, uh, the channel to be converted, uh, the length uh, or the number of uh, the length of the sequence, uh, uh, convergent sequence, uh, which is basically the number of samples uh, to collect and convert, uh, and whether these samples are collected from the same channel or from multiple channels, and whether uh, this is done in a scan in continuously or what they call a scan mode, in which the same sequence is repeated over and over. So all that stuff can be controlled using the registers we discussed last time. This is control register number two, uh, for example, where we can use it. Some of the bits can be used to turn on the power, the A to D, uh, some of them related to the sequence conversion, uh, interrupt flag and interrupt enable, the external trigger, uh, whether it is enabled or not, and the type of the trigger can, that can trigger the conversion. Uh, control register number three, as we said, can be used to control the uh, uh, sequence length. And with this is mostly what we are concerned with in our discussion. Um, the FIFO mode, uh, I said we are not uh, very interested with that. Uh, this register is very important, we said. Uh, it has to do with the number, with the uh, resolution of the result. Um, uh, uh, the prescaler for the clock, in which can, which uh, is needed to specify the A to D clock, which is derived from the bus clock, which is half the bus clock divided by the prescaler plus uh, uh, one, and also two important bits, which are uh, which specify the length of the second phase of conversion. How long the uh, how long is the second phase of the acquisition time, which is specified in cycles? It could be two, four, eight, or sixteen. Uh, and this is a table that shows what prescaler to use for different types of, for different values of the clock uh, uh, in order to match the specification of the A to D uh, clock, which is 100, 500 kilohertz up to 2 megahertz. Um, uh, control register number five is where uh, we select the channel to start the conversion with. Uh, <coughs> So here we specify the channel number, uh, uh, and we can specify, as I just said, whether this uh, uh, see the sequence is collected from multiple channels and with the, or single channel, and whether this is done continuously or just one run for the whole sequence. So all of this we discussed last time. Here are the status registers. Uh, <coughs> this is something related to the. FIFO, we said we are not co uh, uh, concerned, we will not use it. Um, test register, we talked about it. Status register number one is basically a separate flag for each channel. So whenever there is a conversion from any of the, the eight channels, the corresponding flag is set and it can be cleared using one of these th uh, methods. And this is for the digital input enable register, the result, the results register, registers, and uh, so on. Then we talked about the details, all this stuff. We talked about it, the conversion time, the clock, 
the wraparound idea, uh, which is, is uh, which is important or something that may happen when you have a sequence length that is greater than one, and your channel, the starting channel, uh, uh, is not uh, the the first channel. The counter will wrap around and to the uh, beginning of the registers. The external trigger, signed and unsigned, we said we will always use the unsigned representation. So we don't, we did not discuss this. We will always use unsigned representation of the converted results. The A to D operation modes, uh, either run mode, power down mode, or idle mode. The most important thing here is two things is whenever you turn on the A to D or whenever you move from the power down mode to the run mode, you want to do some conversion, you need to wait for 20 microseconds to allow the A to D to stabilize. The second thing is uh, very important. If you are not using the A to D, you are not doing conversions, it is very important to turn, on, to turn off the A to D or put it, to put it in power down mode in order to save the power. Okay, so we reached here, which is uh, the basically the procedure that we need to use or the, we need to follow in order to uh, uh, use the A to D module. Basically, we have four general steps. Step one, number one, is basically hardware related stuff where you need to connect the power supply for the A to D and you need to connect the reference uh, uh, voltages. You need to wire them to the pins. Uh, related to these uh, features of the A to D. Uh, the second thing is also something related to the hardware where you might need to use uh, a signal conditioning uh, circuit where you may need to scale the input signal up or down uh, or you may need to shift it up or down in order to match the input signal range with the uh, reference, input reference uh, uh, range or the input range of the A to D, which is, we already talked about it. The third step is basically to write the appropriate values into the control registers in order to control the operation, is uh, to control the operation of the A, A, A to D. Uh, uh, so through writing the appropriate values to these registers, we can specify, let's say, the clock, we can specify the starting uh, channel, we can specify the uh, length of the sequence or the number of convergence to do per, per, per batch, and so on. However, this does not start the conversion. In order to, to start the conversion process, once you specify all the settings of the A to D, you need to write to this register, which is the A to D control register number five, which basically, if you remember, contains the number of the channel to start with, the channel number to start uh, with. <clears throat> and starting from that channel, if you have a sequence or a multiple, multiple convergence uh, uh, from different channels, this will be the starting channel. Now, after you write to this register, we need to wait until the conversion process is complete. And the conversion process, uh, if you remember also, uh, is two, phase, two phases. We have the sampling time and the conversion time. So we need to wait for that time, but we don't need to time uh, or put a time delay because we can check for the flags. So how, how do you know if the conversion is complete or not? Basically, you can check the uh, sequence completion uh, flag, which is in the ATD status register. So you just write a branch instruction or uh, a while uh, statement that checks this flag. And as long as this flag is not set, this implies that the sequence has not uh, completed. Another alternative is basically to enable the uh, sequence, uh, converging sequence complete interrupt uh, event in which uh, you will interrupt the microcontroller uh, once the convergen, uh, the sequence, uh, the conversion of the sequence is completed. So this is one way to do it. And here we need to pull the flag. It is pulling. You just loop and wait for the flag, which is pulling technically or you can use the A to D if you want to release the microcontroller uh, such that it's capable of doing something uh, else. 
So let's look at an example, uh, very simple. Write a subroutine to initialize the AD, the AD0 converters. We said we have two converters, AD0 and AD1. Uh, for the microcontroller that we have on the mini dragon board, which is DP256 yeah. model, and start the conversion with the following settings. So we have the following settings, non-scan mode, uh, selected channel seven, single channel mode, fast A to D uh, clear, uh, clear uh, which is a feature we said, <coughs> basically uh, we can use it in order to clear the uh, uh, conversion flags in one step. Uh, uh, stop the A to uh, AD0 in wait mode. Disable interrupt. Perform four convergence in a sequence. This implies that we will, once we start the conversion, we will collect four samples, and these samples will be all collected from channel seven. They will be collected from channel seven. Disable FIFO mode. Finish the current conversion, then freeze when BDM becomes active. We will use 10 bit operation, two AD clock periods for the second sampling time, two megahertz clock, uh, which is de driven from a 24 megahertz bus clock. So the bus clock is 24 megahertz, and the result is unsigned and right justified. So basically, if you look at these requirements, they are all. Uh, uh, they, they all require storing some value in the control register. So if you, if you uh, look at them, if you go, let, let me, I will take this example uh, uh, from here. Where is the word file? Here is the word file. So I just took this example here. I put it here because I want to go back and forth between the registers that we have. So this is the same example. We need to figure out what values have to be stored in the A to D uh, 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 resist control uh, registers based on these uh, specifications. So if I go back to the slides, um, here, yes. So let's go back to the first control register, which is control register number two. This is control register number two. Uh, okay. You don't see the camera, right? The zero control two. Okay, let me just bring the camera. So this is the A to D control uh, uh, num register number two. So all what we need to do basically is to figure out what values to put in these bits. So the starting from the most significant bit, what value should we put here? Of course, we have to put one here because we want to turn on the uh, A to D. This flag or this bit, the AFFC uh, flag, which is the fast clear enable, uh, a flag, uh, so we have to set it one because if you go back, go back to the requirements, uh, uh, we need uh, to set. Uh, where is it? Yeah, fast A to D clear flag, which is this one. Uh, uh, we need to set uh, enable this option, so this has to be uh, uh, one. Now, uh, what else we have? Uh, a wait. A wait, which is, we said, if you look here, it is the bit responsible on the behavior uh, of the A to D during wait uh, power mode. And if you go back to the requirements, uh, it says disable, which is where? Yeah, is there something related to the wait results? Nothing, stop AD0 in wait mode, yes, this one. Stop A to D when the microcontroller is in wait mode. So in order to do that, AWAI bit has to be set also to one, right? Because we want to hold the conversion and power down the A to D during, um, during uh, wait mode. 
Now for the external trigger bits, which are bits number four through number two, uh, there is no external trigger. If you look here, there is no external trigger. Uh, so this, the, basically the uh, enable bit, external trigger enable, which is bit number zero, bit number two has to be kept zero and these bits will be left also zero. Actually, they are don't care because we, we, if you put zero here, the mode is entirely dis, uh, disabled. And there is no interrupt. If you look at the specification, uh, um, uh, disable interrupt, which is this point. The interrupts are disabled. So we have to set this or leave this bit zero and this bit by default is uh, zero. Actually, this bit is not, we don't need to specify it. This is set when the convergence sequence is complete. So basically the value that has to be stored in this register to achieve some of the required specifications is this, which is E, if we are talking about hexadecimal, it is E zero. We have to store E zero in this register. So this is what you need to do usually. You need in order to use some peripheral device or some input output port or some feature of the uh, inside the microcontroller, basically you need to look at the special registers that are related, associated with the uh, uh, thing that you are working with, whether it is a port, peripheral device or feature of the microcontroller and so on. So you need to study these registers, know the the how to specify the values in order to uh, con configure and control. Now the third register, A to D zero control three register. So we need to figure out what are the values based on the configurations. So if we go here, we need. Uh, let me first go to the third uh, register number three. Yeah, this is the uh, register number three. So basically this bit is always zero, the most significant bit. And the next four bits are related to the sequence length. And if you remember, the sequence length is four, select seven, channel seven, and we need to perform four convergence in a sequence. So the sequence length is four. So we need to put here zero, one, zero, zero. Okay. And the next bit is the FIFO bit, which is disabled. The, spec the, the, the requirements tell us disable the, uh, this, disable the FIFO mode. So the FIFO mode is disabled. And the last two bits are related to the freeze, which is uh, something related to the debug monitor that we may have in the microcontroller to uh, hand the control to the PC when you have a software interrupt, and this is also given what to do, finish the current conversion, then freeze when BDM become active. So if you look here, we have two bits to specify what happens in freeze mode. And basically here we have a continue conversion in active background, finish current conversion, then freeze, freeze immediately, reserved. So what is required basically is to finish the current conversion then freeze. So finish the current conversion then freeze when BDM become active. So the option that we are looking for is this one, which is one zero. So these two bits which specify the behavior of the A to D during uh, freeze mode is basically one zero. So the value to store in this register is in hexadecimal, it is two so it is dollar sign 22. The same thing, we go to register number four and see what we need to do with the bits inside this register. So this is A to D uh, zero, control register number four. So if we go to register number four, basically it is related to, if you look here from the most significant bit, we need this bit, specifies the resolution of the result and the required resolution is a 10 bit resolution. So this bit has to be uh, left zero. So this bit is zero <laughs> because here uh, one in order to have eight bits zero. So that's the default resolution is basically zero. 
uh, the next bits, two bits actually related, are related to the second phase of conversion and the second phase of the conversion uh, uh, basically uh, here, 2A to D clock periods for the second stage of sample time. So 2A D periods. So basically we are talking about this option. So we need to store here zero, zero, and the rest of the uh, uh, bits to specify the prescaler of the A to D. And if we go to the requirements, the requirements asks us to uh, have a two megahertz clock with an E bus frequency or the, the E clock uh, is basically uh, bus frequency is 24 megahertz. So basically we need to do the calculation in order to figure out the value of that scalar based on this equation, or we can go to the next slide to this table. So we are talking about um, uh, 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 two megahertz. We need two megahertz. Um, that is driven from 24 megahertz. So this is the 24 megahertz. This is the 24 megahertz. <coughs> And we want to get two megahertz. We want to get uh, uh, two uh, megahertz. Which value to pick? Which value to pick? Now, the, this is the maximum frequency that you can use with this free prescaler to have a maximum frequency of two megahertz. So for a 20, when the, the bus clock is 24 megahertz and you want the maximum A to D clock, so this is the maximum A to D conversion clock, then you have to use this prescaler, which is five, which is five. So these bits should be one, zero, one, zero, zero. So these are the bits, the prescaler bits. So is this clear? It's like we want to operate at two megahertz, okay? And the bus clock is 24. So two megahertz is the maximum A to D conversion. And for a 24 bus clock, megahertz bus clock, in order to get this two megahertz, we need to do, to have a prescaler of five. If you don't want to use, to, to use the table, basically just uh, uh, plug the numbers in the previous equation. So we have here 24 multiplied by 0.5, which is a 12, and we want here uh, two megahertz. So it is one over six. Uh, so basically PRS is five. If you do the math, it will be five, instead of using the table. So the value here is basically zero five so this is the value in hexadecimal the last re control register which is a to d zero control register five so this is kind of uh, let's say um, advanced a to d conversion module there are a lot of options that you can control thus you have too many registers to work uh, uh, with uh, uh, if we go to control register number five, basically it has to do with the channel to start with, the multi-scan, the scan, uh, the multi-channel, sorry, the scan mode, the sign representation or unsigned, and the justification. So let's go back to the requirements. The requirements tell us that uh, it is non-scan mode. Okay, so the scan bit, this scan bit has to be zero which is bit number three from left. So the scan bit is zero because we want to do this once. This conversion sequence, which is four uh, 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 samples from channel seven has to be done once. Select channel seven. 
So a channel that to specify the channel, we usually we need to set these bits to the number of the channel. And the number of the channel is basically if we go here, channel seven basically is one one one, which is technically it is seven. So this is seven. You see the board, guys. Do you see the board? Oh yes, Doctor. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, there's something here related to the result. So the result is unsigned and right justified. And in order to have this, if we go back to the register, the most significant, the DGM bit, the justification. So the result is right justified, right? Result is unsigned and right justified. Right justified, then this bit has to be one. This bit has to be one, and it is unsigned, so by default, the D sign bit is zero, which is the default value on reset. It is scan mode, uh, multi-channel, no, it is not multi-channel. All samples are collected from channel seven. So it is non-scan mode, select channel seven only. This is single channel mode, so the multi-bit, multi-channel bit should be zero and this bit by default it is always fixed to zero it is not technically it is not used so the value to store in this register is seven eight dollar sign 87 uh, hexa uh, decimal okay so these are the values that we need to store in these registers and this is a common uh, a frequent practice that we'll do whenever you want to work with any module uh, or peripheral device or port inside the microcontroller. Not this microcontroller only, but all microcontrollers, they follow the same uh, concept. You use a special function registers to control the uh, microcontroller. So let's go back to the example. So this is the uh, example. Okay. Uh, so next you will find the details which is similar to what I did here so the value to be stored in um, uh, in 80 uh, this is 0 e which is similar to what we had let me just bring back the board yeah it is 0 it is e0 the value to be stored in the third th control register number 3 is 22 uh, in register number four, it is zero five, and in register number uh, five, it is eighty seven. Here it is written zero x zero x. You know it is also it means hexadecimal. But our assembler in Code Warrior uh, use a dollar sign to represent a hexadecimal uh, value. So bas basically, if we want if we want to write a program now. Uh, uh, to do this, to configure the A to D to do this. And basically we want to write it a sub, as a subroutine. So we want to write a subroutine that does all this, that configures the A to D uh, in this way. What to do? Here we have the code in assembly and um, uh, C. And this code is written for the mini IDE uh, assembler, which is one of the IDEs that you can write, can use to write code or programs uh, for the HCS12 microcontroller. However, we are using Code Warrior, so the uh, the top of the program might be uh, uh, different. So basically, here we have a subroutine called Open ATD0 or whatever configure ATD0, and basically, what will this do? What will this subroutine do? Basically, it will write the values that we found, that we uh, found for each of the registers. So here we wrote zero E to control register number two. We wrote 22 to control register number three and zero five to control register number uh, four. Uh, and uh, then RTS. Two things to be observed here is these two instructions, which are two, these two instructions. Basically, we have here LDY2 jump sum routine uh, delay by 10 microsecond, which is very important. As we said, we need to wait for 20 microsecond from the moment 
from the moment we turn on the power the HD. Okay, so basically here we are calling some subroutine that is called delay by 10 microseconds, which is already included in this file. For the mini IDE, this is the way to do it. When you have your, pro your program is, uh, is uh, written in, in multiple files, you, you can do it this way. In Code Warrior, it is a little bit more uh, involved. You need to do more stuff. However, the idea is this subroutine is already in this file, so it will be the compile the assembler will be able to find the code of this subroutine when it starts the, the compile the uh, assembling the program. So uh, and it seems it is clear here that this is the value to be passed to the subroutine, which is something similar to what we did when we talked about subroutine, so that this subroutine, the base delay is 10 microseconds, but it is it will be the loop inside the subroutine will be executed twice, which is specified here, in order to generate a delay of 20 microseconds. So this is the first thing, which is these two instructions, which are a must. We need to make sure that we don't start a conversion unless 20 microseconds has elapsed from the moment uh, we uh, turned on the A to B. The second thing is written here, which is, if you remember, we specified four values, one for register number two, one for register number three, and one for register number four. And the last one was for register number five, but it is not written here. And why it is not written? Because as we said uh, that writing to control register number five will start the conversion because it has the a channel number and it specifies whether it is a scan mode and whether it is from multiple channels and so on. So this subroutine is only assumed to configure the ATD, but it is not assumed to start the conversion. However, if the purpose of the ATD of the subroutine is to configure and start the conversion, yes, we can write that uh, register, the value in that uh, register. So uh, here he is, he's assuming that whenever you want to configure the ATD to be to be used according to the given uh, requirements, you can use uh, this subroutine, but this will not start the conversion. In order to start the conversion, you need to write the value that we figured out previously into this register inside your main program after you call this subroutine. However, this can be inserted as we said here, if we assume that the purpose of this subroutine is not to configure the A to D only, but to configure and start the conversion. Okay, so this is in assembly, how to do it in assembly, very simple. Uh, so you see, it's very simple. The, the main effort was in, in figuring out the values to be stored in the uh, registers. Uh, this is the same subroutine in uh, C. So we have, a uh, function called open ad0 which is void void it does not return a value and it does not take in any it does not take any uh, uh, input parameter uh, so we it's straightforward then we call a delay we write into register number three then register number four which these are the same values we found uh, earlier the same thing it is assumed that this is a configuration function. It does not start the conversion. If we want to start the conversion, we need to write the value we found in register, we figured out uh, previously in this register. So this is very simple. This is simply what you need to do. Not for the A to D only, but for any module that you use, basically you need to understand the concept of operation of this uh, peripheral device or module. You need to know uh, uh, the features of the peripheral device, the registers associated of this peripheral, uh, and then take some time to figure out the values to configure, to, to figure values to be stored in these registers to configure the uh, uh, peripheral device according to your needs, uh, and then you use it. So this is the a very important practice that you will do over and over whenever you want to use uh, some peripheral device from the microcontroller. Okay, any question?
All right. Uh, the next example uh, is uh, yes, go Yazan. هاي ال initializations اللي عملناهم لازم تكون within a subroutine. مش بالضرورة لا مش بالضرورة. بس هو اللي طلبه إنه to write a subroutine. But you can read write these instructions in your main program. No problem. Okay. تمام. Okay. دكتور أنا إذا سمحت. تفضل. هسه لما عملنا ديسيبل للانتربت يعني السي بي يو او المايكرو كنترولر راح تعمل فريز على ما تخلص الكونفرجن بروسيس؟ هلا هي مش راح تعمل فريز انت لازم تعمل تجبرها تعمل فريز مش فريز لا بلاش كلمه فريز لازم تخليها تستنى الفلاج قبل ما يصير سيت او لازم انت تخليها تكتب انستراكشنز يو نيد تو رايت انستراكشنز تو تشيك ذا كونفرجن فلاج ويذر ات از وان اور نوت <تصفيق> اوكي <تصفيق> رح نشوف الان النكست اكزامبل شوز ذس ايديا اوكي ذا نكست اكزامبل بيسكلي شوز هاو تو يوز ذا سب روتين اور ذا فانكشن ذات وي روت ان ذا بريفيس اكزامبل ان اي مين ان سم بروجرام هير ات اسكس اس تو رايت ا بروجرام تو بيرفورم اي تو دي كونفرجن اون ذا انالوج سيجنال كونكتد تو شانل نمبر 7 اور انالوج شانل نمبر 7 كولكت 20 كونفرجن ريزلتس اند ستور ذيم ات ميموري لوكيشنز ستارتنج فروم 1000 هيكسا ديسيمال يوز ذا سيم كونفيجريشن فروم ذا بريفيس اكزامبل سو ذا سيم كونفيجريشن ان تيرمز اوف ليتس سي سنجل شانل انسايند ريبريزنتيشن non-scan mode, uh, uh, four convergence, four convergence, okay? But here he, he uh, the, the problem or the question asked us to collect 20 samples, but we configured the, uh, we will configure the A to D to collect four. So we need to perform how many convergence? Five. Five convergence sequences will give us four. Or we can run the A to D in scan mode, but we need to know uh, 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 when to stop. And this is not straightforward. So I'm going to put the hot counter for five times, and that's it, right? Here, yes, we need because we will we will need to use the previous configuration where where we configure the A to D to collect four convergence. Then we have to we have to do five convergent sequences. Each of them has four samples. Okay. Oh, tamam, Doctor. Tamam. Okay. So we will use the same subroutine to to do the convert the configuration that we just did. So we just call the subroutine or the function if we are writing in C. Uh, here, here it is specifying to store in hexad in some memory location. So in C, we don't have direct access uh, to these memory locations. So it is assumed here that we are going to use assembly, uh, uh, and the way to do that. As we said, after we call the subroutine that configures the A to D, uh, basically um, we will write to this register in order to start the, the convergence sequence. However, we need to write this register five times in order to collect 20 samples. So the code basically is this, uh, originate, uh, load stack, initialize the stack, Uh, load x with 1000 so here we are having x pointing to the first location where we will uh, store the results or the converted results jump subroutine open ad0 in order to configure the a to d then y is 5 in order to have a for loop for five times So what we will do, we need to start the conversion sequence by writing the value that we found earlier into this register. So this will tell the A to D to start the conversion and basically it will do four convergences from channel seven. And the first conversion will be stored in AD result zero. The second conversion will be stored in AD result one, despite the fact that we are converting from channel, se channel seven. Okay, so always we will start from uh, 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 zero. So after writing to this register, register we need to wait until the convergence sequence is uh, complete or uh, finished. 
and this is done by pulling this flag. So we are saying here branch if clear, if this flag or this bit is clear in this register, branch to the same instruction, which is the branch instruction. So the CPU will keep looping here until the conversion sequence is completed. Now uh, the conversion sequence is completed, so we can read the results. The first result in AD result zero, AD result one, AD result two, AD result three, and they are written into memory here. So here we have X and we always increment it by two. This is in the, uh, this is indexed addressing, if you remember, uh, with uh, um, offset. Uh, uh, so increment by two, why? Because the result is 16 bits. It is 10 bits, but it is stored in 16 bit uh, 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 register. So we post increment X to point to the next two locations where we store the next result and so on. Then we decrement the Y if it is not zero, we re just repeat this. And we need to do this five times in order to collect the 20 result. And then we need to end our program uh, uh, either by looping infinitely or by writing this instruction, assuming that our microcontroller is connected to, let's say, a PC. Uh, so we handle the control to the, uh, let's say, code uh, warrior or we can write branch infinitely. Branch, go to branch, done, go to done, something like that. Okay, and of course we need to put the open the AD0 subroutine here. We need to write the subroutine here or we include the file that contains that uh, uh, subroutine. Okay. Uh, same thing here. It is written in C. Same same program written in uh, uh, C. Um, so nothing new. They called the sub function that configures the A to D a for loop that runs five times. You write the register. You wait until this flag. Uh, until this flag is. One, while it is not one, while it is zero, keep in this loop. Otherwise, when the result is ready, store it. And here he is storing uh, 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 the results in an array called buffer. And the size of this buffer is 20, store 20 uh, values, store 20 uh, values. Okay, and each time it is multiplied by um, uh, by uh, each loop, each iteration is multiplied by four because in each iteration we store four uh, elements. Okay, um, as I said last time, uh, uh, um, in the textbook there are a few sections that give you uh, practical examples on some sensors that you can use to measure some physical attributes such as temperature. I guess there is one on humidity. Uh, so three sections, uh, you can look at the circuit that is used to interface to such sensors and the code that is used to use these uh, sensors. So basically these sensors are sources for some input analog signal uh, and you need to, you might need to use some scaling circuit or voltage translation circuit in order to um, interface it to the uh, microcontroller. Okay. Any question? Okay, no questions. Muhammad, did you ask? No, Doctor, it's old. Old. Okay. It's at 7 o'clock. Let's take the quiz, if you want. There's no place where we can start the topic. Let's do the quiz, if you want. Uh, 
Uh, but before we do the quiz, if you have any questions, Mohammed Haket, you want to have, uh, you want to ask something about the term paper. Ah, doctor, doctor, as as far as I'm concerned, the topic, and I'm going to explain the details of the concepts that we took in the in the course. يعني which is good. وكيف الابلكيشن تاعه في الباور سيستم يعني واخترت هذا الموضوع وكتبت البروبوزل بس بس خلصت البروبوزل لقيت واحده من البيبرز واحده 2018 وواحده 2015 تمام؟ هسه اللي في 2015 مستعمل مايكرو كنترولر عند رقم معين فضليت ابحبش يومين ورا بعض على نفس الموضوع لقيت حتى اجدد بيبر في الموضوع هذا 2019 مستخدم نفس المايكرو كنترولر فبصير استخدم بعد اذنك 2015 لانه هي بتبين الكونستراكشن وهاو تو ديزاين الامبيدد سيستم وامبلمنتيشن في في الموضوع اللي انا بدي اياه. Why not to use the three papers؟ آه لانه البيبرز الاخيره آه هي ابلكيشن فانا ايش اخترت؟ اخترت انه كيف ال كيف بدي اعمل ديزاين والبيبر الثاني كانت على ابلكيشن. طيب حطها بما انها ابلكيشن يعني. خلص تمام يعني بصير استعمل اللي في 2015 هذا قصدي. ما في مشكلة بس خلي كمان التنتين هذول عك اللي هم 2016 2013 ماشي دكتور شكرا اوكي ماشي اني اذر كويستشن اوكي خليني انا اي نيد تو جو تو اي ليرنينج تو ذا اي ليرنينج سيستم سو بليز اوبن ذا اي ليرنينج Um, but wait like one minute I need to enable the quiz turn on editing mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay Okay, now the quiz is available in the virtual classroom uh, section. Uh, quiz number two, you can click on it. Um, we have, um, uh, basically, we have three problems. Uh, two, one of them is multiple choice, I guess. One of them is you need to do some calculations, simple calculations. Um, to provide a short answer, which is a number. You to provide an answer as a number. And the third one is, uh, you have also a shorter program. I, th I think there are three questions on that. No, five questions, five simple and short questions on that program. So please start your quiz. And I guess the time is 18 minutes. Uh, for this quiz. All right, good luck.